Hi everyone, welcome to the Mac Western 365 YouTube channel and this entry in the Flowbyte series. Uh, in this session we will look at the, one of the issues which seems to be commonly encountered within the Flow community uh, and this relates to the format of text being maintained in Flow Actions when retrieved from Microsoft Forms. So let's have a look at what the issue is. In this scenario I have a Microsoft Forms form and I have a single question, which is a text box, which requires or which allows multiple lines of text to be added, which means that I can add an answer, uh, which I can then put multiple lines in. And then I can hit submit. Now, what is generally a common scenario is that when forms get submitted, there's a flow waiting for a submission and then it's going to do something with it. And what, as an example, I'm doing is sending an email um, with the information that I'm getting from my response. And to be honest, the actual flow to do that in the first place is quite easy because I have a when a new response is submitted trigger, which I can configure to, uh, to the form ID and I can see the information coming through. I have an action which allows me to get the response details and then I have an email action which I can then send to something. Now if I look at my response details I can see that in my uh, response I have this is my answer and I can add multiple lines which you saw me type on the form itself. And when it comes through in JSON it has these slash ends as new line separators. However, when that gets translated through into an email, as an example, uh, it's actually get, uh, that gets stripped and there's nothing put in there in its place. So when I actually look at uh, the email, you can see that the rest of my email uh, has some HTML around it. However, my answer doesn't. And so what that actually looks like is this. So I get my, all of the lines for my answer all on a single line. So let's have a look at how we can sort that. So the answer to the issue is that I need to replace the slash ends with something that can be used in other actions. So for example, replacing them with a BR, uh, so a line break in HTML. But how can I do that if when Flow you, looks at it, it doesn't actually see those line breaks in place. Now there is an expression um, within flow called replace. And th there are quite a few uh, scenarios where replace works very, very well, but it usually involves actually being able to pattern match on a piece of text. Uh, whereas what we're trying to do now is match or replace an, an actual missing piece of text or a, a, an actual line break. Uh, so whilst it seems quite, uh, especially for developers, it seems quite uh, straightforward that you just try and find char 13 or char 10, uh, the char um, function doesn't actually, or reference, doesn't actually appear within flow. So I need to do something just very slightly different to be able to handle this. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to initialize myself a variable. And I'm going to call this variable line break. I'm going to set this as a piece of text and all I'm going to do in the value is click into the value box and hit the enter key just once. So you can see that it's actually now created a line break within this variable. And I'm just going to name that so that I know what that function is. And now, if I come down to my send an email, and if I look at what I've got here, this is my, where my text was, I'm just going to delete that, and I'm going to replace that with an expression. Now, my expression will be replace, and the IntelliS IntelliSense tells me that I need to give it the string that, of text that I want, um, the original, uh, which contains the original text, I need to tell it what the old text is that I'm going to replace and what I'm going to replace it with. So I'm going to use my dynamic content selector and I'm going to select my long answer from forms. 
The second thing is it wants to know what the old text is. Now remember that when this comes through from, uh, from forms and, and gets referenced by flow, we don't have anything that we can necessarily hook onto. So I'm going to now use the variable I created, which will be line break. So there we go. So now I've got variables line break in there. And what am I going to replace it with? I'm going to replace it with a HTML break. So let's hit OK on that. And now I'm going to save that. I'm going to go to and test it. I'm just going to use the same data that I had on my previous run. OK, so that's now running through. I can see that my line breaks initialized. When I come down, I've still got exactly the same output from my form. But when I look at my email and look at the body, I've now actually got two line breaks in there because I put two carriage returns in the answer. So now when I go and look at my email, we see this, which is more akin to what we want to see, where my where the formatting that was put in on the form submission itself is now carried through to the email. So there we go, we've managed to solve the issue of our flow uh, stripping out the formatting from our form submission, especially when we're trying to use it in something else. And we've managed to put some uh, replacement formatting in there in its place. Obviously, this is done in the context of forms. You can use this same technique uh, in a number of different uh, different ways for a number of different scenarios as well. I hope that's been useful. Uh, if you need any further help, please feel free to contact me on Twitter at MattWestern365 or feel free to check out the Microsoft Flow community forums, uh, which is where myself and a number of Flo uh, other Flownauts uh, super users will be there to, to assist you in any way we can.